Namaste and welcome back to Grow with the Jan family. Today we're talking again about China-India border. Um, we know in the news yesterday, India took over the hills of Finger Four. So it's amazing, amazing news. We're excited to hear this because we feel like China's been creeping, 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 taking spaces, taking spaces, you know, taking spots that were considered like no man's zone and that we're just being patrolled um, and setting up tents and, and bringing their military in. So we, we are glad that India is now taking some spots. And we think there needs to be some more of this. Like we would like to see them, you know, if for every space that China is taking that they're not supposed to be in, even if it's no man's zone, India needs to take two spots so that they can negotiate. China is a bully. And, you know, last time we talked about how, you know, they're feeding their people like that India is starting this. They're the annoying neighbor. They're the ones that, you know, are need to be taught a lesson and their army is just a joke. So we know that they don't think highly of the Indian army, unlike the rest of us that know how strong the Indian army can be. But we feel like Indian army has just kind of been letting them slowly encroach encroach and when they go to try talking to them obviously know what happened last time 20 soldiers were martyred um you know in the process because they went to talk peacefully and chinese soldiers had weapons even though they weren't conventional guns there was no fire shot done there was still weaponry it's still very medieval um, and we hear again that this is happening another time that they went to come and talk peace supposedly with spears and um, things that look like machetes and they still had machine guns on their backs. So I can't imagine talking peace when you have a huge knife in your hand that you're coming, oh, I'm just going to talk peace with them and, and we'll negotiate, you know, the territory. It's not how it happens. And so I hear that India fired warning shots, like you need to move back. And now it's all over China news that India fired the first shot. But if you think about it, like if people are coming with you, and these are just warning shots, people are coming at you with what look like machetes and spheres, like medieval weaponry. It's still a weapon. They're not coming talking peace. This is like, there. I think India is being way too nice. Like a warning shot. I think if I saw guys running at me with those things in the, or even like attempting to come in my direction, I think I would shoot them. Like no joke. Like no matter what you're using may not be a gun, but you're still coming with the intention of harming, killing, and it's still a weapon. I know China likes to bend the rules and this is how it happened last time. Um, but last time it wasn't quite as open as I think this time it was a little bit more out in the open. Last time they were going to negotiate. Um, it's just crazy. Like, I am glad that India is taking posts. Like I said, the more I think you need to at least do equal, if not more than what China is doing. Um, even if you're staying within Indians borders, if they're going and encroaching, they're going to keep creeping and creeping and creeping. And if you kind of look the other way and just say, well, they're not harming anybody. Yeah. But when they take another state away, what are you going to say then? So I'm glad that India is taking these um, forward action towards the Chinese army. You have to be on top of them. They are a bully. They've been doing this. They did it to Tibet. They've done it to Taiwan, Hong Kong. This is how they do it. They just keep creeping and creeping until they've taken over your land. They don't necessarily have to fire a shot, um, but obviously you see they come with other weaponry. This is what we want to see from India. We want to see the strength. We want to see action. You need to go, like now I know the two heads of the army are going to meet in Russia for neutral ground to discuss. That There's a discussion now because now there's some, India's taking, you know, creeping in and, and we know China's already been creeping in. So this is good. Now there's going to be some negotiation, but India needs to get some more, um, some more pawns to negotiate, I think, behind them. 
You know, this is what we want to see. We know when Modi was there um, after the 20 soldiers were martyred that he had said, like, don't wait for my final word. Like, if you feel like something needs to be done, do it. So I'm glad there's some action. You know, we don't want to see any more soldiers die. But we also don't want to see China thinking that India army is a joke because we know it's not. We know that they are being, they're trying to do everything the right way. And China doesn't operate like that. So you kind of have to, like Krishna, you kind of have to bend the rules a little bit in order for good to win over the dragon. So we know these soldiers put their life on the line. We don't want to see any more lost. Um, we heard that one of the Tibetan soldiers in the special forces, secret forces, um, lost his life um, with a landmine. Um, makes us so sad. But I did watch some of the um, news where they showed the Tibetan flag and the Indian flag and, and soldiers and people from both Tibet and India. It was just it was a beautiful, beautiful tribute to the soldier that had to unfortunately lose his life um, because of this a lot of crap going on at the border right now with China. But we know China doesn't recognize that India has Tibetan soldiers. We know this was kind of a secretive force, um, probably for many reasons, um, to keep them safe. But also, I'm sure, I mean, China's like, oh, whatever, but... I'm sure the Tibetans want to help India. India has done so much for them. We've seen, you know, the thank yous that they've given out. Um, India has welcomed them with open arms. And I'm sure if they want to serve and help at the border, that's probably the best thing that they could give back to India is trying to keep India safe. They can't go back to their home country um, and protect Tibet. But I'm sure they will when they're able to go back when it's free Tibet um, and take the Holy Dalai Lama with is like working together, um, you know, but hopefully this I feel like is now coming out and India is recognizing it. And hopefully um, Trump will sign the bill and and recognize Tibet as a free country. So this will continue and and hopefully China will get a message, a big message. We need something bigger than just the apps. We need, you know, take over some of these places, recognize Tibet as a free country, Taiwan, Hong Kong, you know, um, put some something. I mean, China has done so much that the world has been so blind to it that there needs to be something done between the coronavirus, between taking over all these countries, between not treating the Uyghur Muslims like humanely, more like World War II genocide, just everything and the lies and the stealing, um, it needs to stop. And so whatever we can do that will work in India's favor, in the US favor, in the world's favor right now, um, to make sure that it doesn't continue. The world is going to wake up. Um, this coronavirus was a huge slap in the face. So hopefully we'll see you again tomorrow. Bye.